There's no attempting lying to me. I know why you came here. You came here to see cute little animals die. Utterly misunderstood animals at that. You're here to proliferate stereotypes. And you're all going to hell. But not before I get there first. Showing it to you. But I'm just giving you what you want. Make no doubts about that. Wait, what's that? You say I've never given the viewers what they want? It's only about what I want? What are you, Peter? If you don't learn how to laugh, you're gonna end up just like these lemmings, only without any friends. Probably a lot like this guy in that damn DMA friendless purgatory. Lemmings was released on February 14th, aww, 1991, in Europe for the Commodore Amiga. Now in America, Wiki seems to think would be released 1992 for the Amiga, but for 1991 for DOS, Wiki like many times, is utterly, utterly full of shit. Not quite sure how Amiga World and American Magazine would review it in June of 1991, and it would make their best games of the year for 1991 if it was released in North America in 1992. This is why you don't count on Wikipedia for your knowledge. Let's look up some magazines. Let's get some actual research going. Wikipedia is, it gives you an idea, absolutely. Go to Wikipedia first. Bathe yourself in some generally accurate knowledge. But don't you dare fall into the trap of relying upon it. And then a whole bunch of people are gonna call it documentaries too. This is not a documentary, this is an opinionated review. But you know what? I dare say I got a little bit more accurate knowledge than a lot of those so-called documentaries do. So Lemmings was designed by DMA Design, which is now known as Rockstar North. That is absolutely right. The creators of Grand Theft Auto were the ones responsible for massacring a bunch of cute little rodents. Utterly, utterly makes sense, doesn't it? You can probably put the uh, modern blame for the thought of lemmings uh, being suicidal creatures to this game directly. I mean, it's gone back centuries. There's been countless things before and since this game, which uh, keep up that uh, you know, stereotype, which is yeah, uh, it's somewhat based on actual reality. They don't commit suicide, as in you know, I'm going to kill myself. You know, it's a uh, you know, their population booms, and sometimes you know migratory habits they choose to go swimming off in the ocean and stuff and they might happen to drown or something on their you know trip to sea it's it's that kind of thing they do die a lot um when their population booms and they go spreading outwards so there is actual reality you know much like a lot of stereotypes you know there's something there but uh, overall it's wrong so for the super touchy amongst you there, I said it, I corrected the record, I know, I think the majority of people know, but it's still uh, you know, perfectly wonderful and acceptable to uh, point out a bunch of people that just go along with the crowd and don't care about the reality of situations. It's, it's very fair to call them a bunch of lemmings uh, as a derogatory term. You could say that the people that get bent out of shape about lemmings are a bunch of lemmings themselves. Life isn't black and white, it's shades of gray. I'm actually playing this game in uh, NTSC mode. This is uh, designed by uh, DMA, which you know was a British company they they designed it in NTSC 
320 by uh, 200. Uh, but on a pal, Amigas, uh, it'll be uh, 320 by 256 when you design a 320 by 200 game. In that pal setup, what you get is more of a wide uh, screen kind of a look. That is how it was designed and meant to look. However, it does seem as if DMA took some kind of consideration for the NTSC market. Again, this I'm playing it in NTSC because that's what it says on the disc. It says, NTSC version. You know, life isn't just black and white, everybody. Sometimes you gotta roll with the situations, and in these situations here, when it says NTSC on the disc itself, I'm here to uh, explain to you all that America was a market for the Amiga. It did mean something here. We got the games that you got if they were good. And we got a hell of a lot of other games too which were made here. That is the overall uh, goal of the channel. You know, I, Eventually I'm gonna review Elvira, an RPG which was made in uh, Europe and when I do that one because it is so you know artistically relevant there's lots of actual you know bodies and faces in that. When I cover that one, which is also an NTSC compatible, it was made in NTSC graphics mode, but it was made in a PAL region, and it was released in America, but it is so obvious when you play it in NTSC mode that you're not playing it as designed. It looks bad in NTSC despite being released here. When I come to that game, I'm gonna play it in PAL mode. It's shades of gray, people, but this is, you know, Lemmings here, you know, despite being graphically pleasing, you know, a lot of the environments and backgrounds, they are graphically well done. They look good, but it's not, you know, an artistic, you know, monument to the Amiga by any means. This game looks good. In either mode, it looks good in NTSC mode, it looks good in PAL mode, but I'm just telling you, it was designed in PAL mode, so, you know, go off to anybody else's video if you want uh, to see it. I'm actually telling you, unlike anybody else, when, it, when it's the opposite, when it's an NTSC design game, nobody says anything, nobody shows it, sometimes I show it, sometimes I don't, but I always, always, I always make note of it. So you can make the decision, so you can look it up for yourself, so you can decide. Because that's what's right to do. But it may be that DMA, uh, you know, did actually think about the NTSC versions. Because you'll notice there is some black blackness on the very bottom, uh, underneath the, uh, you know, menu. There. <laughs> you see here, press right button to, right button for menu there. That was covering the full screen, but when you go to the actual game screen, it's black. That's not how I set up my camera. That wasn't showing on the actual, uh, you know, NTSC version. So I don't know if that is... You know, I, what I think is the menus there, you know, the icons, that's in another resolution. The Amiga could do that. The Amiga could have multiple resolutions on screen at the same time. I think the bottom there is in another resolution, like medium or high res. It's in another resolution while the gameplay itself on top is in low res. And perhaps they were also, you know, keeping in mind television screens, which would often, you know, not show, you know, outside areas, although this should be... Uh, border safe on, uh, you know, regular televisions, 320 by 200, I don't know. Uh, when I, I looked, there is, there are a couple moments in this game uh, where I actually, I took the time to compare the two versions side by side, and I'm like, this isn't like other games. It actually does feel like the NTSC version, it's not perfect, it's not like they completely redid the graphics for NTSC. But it feels as if they did something for NTSC. It doesn't look as bad as, you know, most games when you switch d between the modes that they are not designed for. It doesn't seem like it's as bad. So perhaps DMA 
actually did something with this NTSC version in terms of the graphics. And they definitely did something in terms of the sound and the music and the overall speed. The game runs identical in either mode. The speed of the game runs identical in PAL or NTSC. The music runs exactly the same speed in either mode. So they definitely, you know, they were on top of their programming knowledge there. Now we've got just absolute uh, smorgasbord of uh, content, of goodies with which uh, to uh, show off today in this review. Actual research, not Wikipedia research. So from June of 1991, the American magazine Amiga World, uh, 395 in America, 495 in Canada, showing off the Amiga CD TV productivity tips 15 ways to more efficient animation, 30 plus utilities to optimize your system, and at the very, very bottom left, new games. That's, that's how it was over here in America. You know, we like those games, have no doubts about it. We like some other stuff too. Some very, very Expensive stuff. A very, very important market, despite what uh, Wikipedia or some certain YouTubers might think. And what do they advertise in these magazines? Well, they advertise uh, very expensive things like the GVP A500 Plus, which would have cost you as much as the Amiga 500. My, this is my exact uh, model, by the way. This is my uh, hard drive right here. Eight megabytes of external RAM. Let's see a little uh, hard drive in there. 40 megabytes through 100. Mine has four plus gigabytes on it now. But uh, yeah, GVP, great valley products. Clark Avenue, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, American Company. And perhaps they'd be showing off the cutest little hard drive you ever did see. Novia 20i, the smallest hard drive interface in the world is now available for your Amiga 500 computer. Now most uh, hard drives for the Amiga plug into the uh, side expansion bay here, but this one, this sucker here, would plug into the motherboard. Lemmings are odoriferous, arctic rodents, notorious for periodic mass suicide. You'd think that would rule out computer game stardom, but no. Psychosis craftily transformed the mean-tempered ice rats into lovable Pillsbury Doughboys with green hair and 78 RPM voices. These little guys are so darn cute, you just can't help wanting to save them from self-destruction. That's where your problems begin. Lemmings, 44, 99. Looks like an arcade game, but it's more a series of puzzles. Save a specified number of the cuddly creatures within a given time limit, or else repeat the level. They then go into mechanics, so we don't discuss mechanics because uh, you people aren't stupid. Lemmings' graphics and sound are polished, but unambitious. What it lacks in flash, however, makes up for in comfort. Smooth and addictive, it includes a fast restart option, instant access to any level you've already seen, and a nifty two-player mode with 20 levels of its own. The program detects and uses extra memory, it recognizes an external drive, and minimizes disrupting on single drive systems. The only rough edge is the DOS-based copy protection. To make sure you experience plenty of stress and frustration, Lemmings increasingly restricts your use of the most helpful skills. The screens get so tough that you think there must be design flaws. Uh, goofy music drones on relentlessly, subtly lowering your intelligence. By level 50, you're considering suicide yourself. And level 51? Curiously, that's where the entire review ends, right there. I know what they're getting at with the considering suicide yourself, you know, dot, 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 and level 51. I, I, I get, you know, what they're saying there. It's my level 51, you actually, uh, you actually do it. But what an awful, like, that is not, like, that is not the end. Like, what kind of a review is that? Um, 
I, I don't know what he thinks about this game, honestly. I have no idea if he likes it, if he's recommending it to people, if he hates it. There's... all of that is there. It's... I, I don't know what he's trying to get at here. What's his opinion about the game? Uh, sounds like he's saying by level 51 you're gonna kill yourself. It's that bad. I don't, I don't know what he's getting at. This Dodson Yapel, Yipple, that is uh, the person that wrote this one. That is one of the worst endings to a review I have ever seen. Like, it just. Like, I, I really didn't think that was the end. I looked at every single page of the magazine. Like, with a zoomed in look. Like, really trying to find where it went on. Was it continued at some other page? It was not. That is the end of the review. And at first, I, it didn't make any sense to me, but you know, I get it now. But it's, it's still like, what an awful way. For him uh, to uh, end that one there. But back to Amiga World for their special games annual November of 1991. The top 20 games of 91. I've uh, shown this one to you uh, before with some other reviews. And again, Wiki, Amiga World would not review a game unless it had been officially released in America. Now, there were stores that would deal in imports. They'd actually get the physical European release. They'd import it to America, and you could buy it usually through catalogs and stuff. You could actually buy what was imported. You know, there were people that dealt with that. Amiga World, no, they only dealt with what was officially released here. Bet you haven't uh, ever uh, seen uh, this one before, though. Here we have, I've already done uh, King's Bounty, but here they actually, yeah, this is the thing about like looking this stuff up uh, online. Like, don't, uh, some, it's pretty easy for me to find Amiga World, uh, you know, when they actually review an entire product. But when they do these little snippets here, the Prince of Thieves, King's Bounty, forty nine ninety five, New World and Beauty, and the new adventure game from the makers of Might and Magic Game Series. Cassie was a young noble in the series of King Maximus, charged with finding the king's stolen scepter of order. You must raise an army before setting out after the thieves. I had no idea that little goodie was uh, buried in there, nor did I have any idea that this was in there. Announcing the extension of the Amiga 500 Power Up program through Christmas, and it will continue to be available to students and teachers. The program allows owners of the Commodore 8 bit computers to upgrade to the Amiga 500 for a discount. Cool. But you're here for the best games of 1991 from this American magazine. Number six, The Killing Games Show. Number five, Prince of Persia. Power Monger. Indianapolis. 500. The number one game of 1991! Lemmings! Well, despite the uh, original Amiga World reviewer leaving that very strange review where we don't actually know what he thinks, the magazine itself would rate Lemmings as the number one Amiga game of 1991. And while I'm not always in agreement with a lot of their choices, I. I you know, they sometimes made some curious ones. <laughs> I I do think uh, this one probably uh, deserves to be uh, right up there. Let me just challenge you to save the lives of suicidal green-haired rodents on 120 levels of mayhem. And just guide the lemmings from the entrance of the screen to the exit within a specified period of time and with minimal loss of lemming life to aid you in this adventure of several spe special abilities that you can assign to lemmings. A scenario generator editor keeps this game from ever getting old. What the hell is a scenario generator slash editor? Where the hell is this? Is this a thing? I've never heard of this thing. One of the most ingenious and entertaining game releases for the Amiga. JJ, whoever the hell you are. Don't expect to sleep until you're done insanely addictive. P.O. Who the hell you are, and they even got some hints in there. And if you order the video toaster VHS right now, you get $5 off the retail price, plus a free Psygnosis Lemmings game demo disc. So, uh, how about some actual uh, opinions uh, from myself here? Now, Lemmings. It is amongst my favorite Amiga games. It is amongst my favorite games ever for any system. 
it's up there. It's not my favorite, no, but it's definitely uh, probably top 10, definitely, in terms of the Amiga. But intellectually speaking, if you were going to name the greatest Amiga game of all time, just through sheer thought processes, I, I think this would be the number one choice, uh, intellectually speaking. And the reason I say that is because, well, this is an Amiga original game. It was created on the Amiga first, and it was ported to everything. This is the most ported Amiga game that was ever created, period. Nothing else. You know, there's lots of games that were ported quite a bit, but this is an Amiga original. And it was ported to everything back then. It was ported to everything since. It, it is the quintessential Amiga title. When you think Amiga, you should probably be thinking of this game. DOS, Macintosh, Atari SG, Xenex Spectrum, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, Amstrad, CPC, Master, System, Commodore, 64, 3DO, Atari Lynx, Game Boy, CDI, Amiga CD, 32, and it, it goes on, it goes on, and on, and on, PlayStation, okay, well, well later on, uh, this stuff, like, this is the single most uh, ported Amiga original game that ever existed. Expansions, sequels galore, uh, you name it. Uh, this is a uh, storied uh, franchise originally on the Amiga, and it's important that it was an Amiga original game. My personal favorite Amiga game, it's, guess what, it's, it's not an Amiga original game. It's best on the Amiga, most definitely. That's important, but it's not an Amiga original game. You know, personally, that is absolutely fine to have a personal game that's not an Amiga original game because you, know, you played it first on the Amiga. It's best on the Amiga. You know, that stuff matters uh, personally, but uh, intellectually, you know, if you're gonna have a well thought out list, you know. It, you can definitely include those other games that are best on the Amiga, but weren't necessarily created on the Amiga. But the number one spot probably should be reserved for an Amiga original game. You know, Monkey Island 2 and Monkey Island, they're, they're the top ones on the Lemon Amiga game list voted by the users. You know, great games, not Amiga originals, though. I think an Amiga original probably deserves be the number one. You gotta, you know, when you think of the Amiga, you should be thinking firstly of an Amiga original game. <laughs> this is the one I choose personally. If I was going to represent the Amiga in the future, this is the one I choose because it's, it's, this embodies the Amiga. It's not the most graphically advanced game. It does not, it's not a powerhouse for your beloved Amiga, but so what? Shadow of the Beast is a powerhouse. Do you want Shadow of the Beast to uh, be representing the Amiga 100 years from now? No, you don't. <laughs> you want a great game. And this game, it's for all ages. While not a graphic powerhouse, it is certainly graphically beautiful at times. Uh, maybe some of these yellower levels or the pink levels are an exception. But a lot of the uh, you know, more bluish levels and uh, a lot of those uh, stone kind of levels like a lot of these levels really look super pleasing i actually do think of lemmings in terms of graphics as a very good graphically speaking game i don't personally think i'm doing a disservice to the amiga's graphical capabilities by thinking this is one of, you know, this is intellectually the game to point to. You know, to people that don't know about the Amiga, this is the one you point them to. I don't think I'm doing the Amiga's graphics any disservice. 
uh, technically speaking. Uh, but gameplay-wise, oh, it's a beauty. It's a beauty in terms of the gameplay. All ages. You, know, you can be a kid, as I was. I had this game back in the day. Had Oh No More Lemmings as well. These these were favorites. You play them. I play them with my sister and my dad. Two-player mode. Uh, I'm not going to be showing you two-player mode, unfortunately, right now. Maybe in the future. Maybe we'll get a chance uh, to uh, look at that one. Should I get any friends? I, I loved this game as a kid. I remember playing it on the actual Amiga. I remember playing it at a friend's house uh, in DOS. I'll never forget how happy I was. Uh, Find out my uh, neighbor, who I sometimes would stay over in the morning to catch the bus with. Basically, you know, like my mom and dad or whatever, like leaving a little early. And I'd go over there for a little while and uh, just wait for the bus to come. And uh, I was so happy that their computer had lemmings on it. I was so happy. And they were so surprised that I did so damn well at this game. Uh, you know, just first time I'm playing it, and I am just kicking its butt because I had already uh, played it quite a bit on the Amiga. I, you know, the, as a kid, you play this game, even the first level, you know, you think it's so super easy. I probably ran out of time in the first level, you know, you, you know, I was thinking <laughs> as a kid. Um, but as a kid, I also remember loving it so much that you just kept playing it. I definitely got into uh, the second level of difficulty. I definitely remember seeing the Shadow of the Beast level, which is at the end of the first one. I think I uh, even saw the um, Menace level. So I definitely I, I was pretty good as a kid, uh, but uh, it's just perfectly... Uh, people say Mario! is such an intuitive game, you know, you play the first level and it's just, it kind of like just gradually, uh, you know, you know, gives you training wheels or something and you gradually, you know, you just figure it all out. That's not true at all. <clears throat> if, you'd have, if, you've, if you're a kid and you've never played Mario, you're in for some tough times, but uh, uh, even this game, you know, if you're a kid, you, you have, it's a hard, games are hard as a kid. But uh, this has got to be the most intuitive uh, game, uh, you know. Like it's such, it's such a gradual thing. A lot of these, uh, a lot of the earlier levels were actually later levels. You know, somebody actually from the team, you know, took the uh, the harder levels and just you know gave you more tools and stuff so you could more easily uh, figure them out in the beginning. So they, they, they it started out as a hard, hard, hard game. And uh, later on, they t you know they got somebody to make it a lot easier, so you could get into the game originally. It's, you know, it's very, very few people are ever gonna win this game. This is a very hard game, but by no means are you going to you know regret playing it. Like you're gonna have fun, you know, with what you're able to accomplish on your own with this game. Play it. You see, is, see how far you can get? Uh, you will be extraordinarily well rewarded uh, when you persevere. And I love the fact this is an abnormal genre. I love, you know, the point to that. This is, if you're going to intellectually, you know, rate the Amiga's number one game, I love the fact that I'm here saying... Here, look at this puzzle game, a non-standard genre for a very non-standard computer system. I love that I am, you know, taking something different for a computer system that was oh so very different. This one taxes your mind. Back in my day. The games were not only not only fun. The games were not only uh, not politically correct, but they were actually uh, you know they actually taxed your mind as well on occasion. This is one that definitely taxes your mind, and uh, it's definitely full of frustration at times. <laughs> uh, I was very frustrated uh, 
when I was getting towards those later levels. And it's not it's not all gradual either, you know. I think some of you know the mayhem difficulty level starts out so much tougher than some of the later mayhem levels are. <laughs> so you you get a super tough level, and then you're eased off it a little bit. You get a few levels that are actually a sigh of relief. I love the fact that you know it's not just completely up the ante in terms of difficulty. A lot of it sometimes it's like. Let's give, it, let's give these players a little bit of a break. Let's make it a little easier. That way they won't be as pissed off <laughs> when we eventually get it to the harder levels. You don't need to win this one to have a blast. And trust me, the ending is not exactly the most rewarding in the world. So it's good that it gives you all it needs to give you earlier on. Time for some more goodies. The definitive computer game magazine. Computer Gaming World. June of 1991, another June 1991. There's a little advertisement in this uh, issue. Uh, save the Lemmings End! I, I, I don't know what you're getting at. Psychosis. I don't know what you're getting at with some of these. <laughs> uh, Commodore Amiga, Commodore CD, TV, Atari ST, PC compatibles. Signals is 29 St. Mary's Court, Brooklyn, Massachusetts. That was the American uh, division. They did have uh, a division here in America. But uh, the company itself was headquartered in Britain. Another leap forward. Signosis is Lemmings. Alan Greenberg. Lemmings is also the name of a new addiction, aka game from Psygnosis. The challenge is for a human player to subtly intervene in lemming affairs, thereby guiding them to safety and saving them from extinction. This may well be the best offering to date from Psygnosis, and certainly is worth lining up in the fashion of the game's title characters to obtain a copy. Those who enjoyed the brief glimpses of godhood afforded in the plane of electronic arts populace will be treated to yet another divine experience in Lebbings, albeit with a far less dignified group of devout followers. Eyes and ears for Lemmings, the usual assault of sounds and graphics made on the senses by Psygnosis programs is present in Lemmings. Although these may be a little more subdued in some cases, sound effects are plentiful, realistic, and quite useful for keeping track of the creatures. Players who have stereo speakers connected to their systems will be able to approximate the position of the source of a sound based upon which speaker it is heard from. The player has the option of doing it without some of these sound effects in order to hear some appropriately traditional, nerdy, actually, music. And where lemmings go, fun follows. Recreational computing may well be the last safe outpost wherein a company may claim to have an addicting product and not find themselves in danger of attack by a lynch mob. Not since Tetris has this reviewer been so addicted to or completely fascinated with a series of challenging puzzles. For those who enjoy fast-moving jousts of logic and creativity, Follow the crowd and get Lemmings. Tetris is a great comparison, not just in terms of puzzle games, but in terms of the actual system here. We're talking intellectually about the Amiga here. What is intellectually the best Amiga game? You know, what's intellectually the best Game Boy game? It's probably the game that was originally released for the system. Tetris, which put that game, which by no means is really graphically or sound or any of that stuff is not really taking advantage of a, a system which doesn't exactly have much to take advantage of anyway but it's by no means technically the greatest game for the system but it is in, think, in terms of a thinking man or woman it probably is you know, the first game that was released for the sucker probably was the greatest game that was released for it. And I've never even played Tetris on the Game Boy itself. And I'm still aware enough to know, know its place in history there. And uh, regardless of your personal feelings on this particular game, how much you love it, how much you don't, uh, how much you might love a game more than this, if you're really diving into the semantics of it all, 
this is probably the smart choice, quite honestly. I said thinking man or woman. This is actually, like, in terms of women, this is one of those games, like Tetris, you know, it's a game that spanned the sexes, and it's not just that stereotypical nerd. Every sex gender, they really loved this game. You could, anybody, all ages, no matter what gender, this game is something that anybody, yeah, you want, you want to point somebody to an Amiga game, this is the one you point them to first. And even I, as an American who makes a point out of showing American design titles on this channel because so many out there don't understand the impact of America for this system, even I am going to point somebody who's never played the Amiga and has no idea about these games, if I'm going to point them to a game, this is the game you gotta play. You know, I'm gonna point him to the games I like, of course I am. <laughs> but this is, the, this is the smart choice, this is the one I'm gonna point to, like, I'm sure you'll love this one. I'm sure you'll all get enjoyment out of this particular game. Back to Computer Gaming World in the November 1996 Special Edition issue of the 150 Best and 50 Worst Games. Of all time, in a magazine that covered all kinds of computer systems, it almost ranks the top 10. Number 12. Really high up there. Cygnosis 1991. The cries of, oh no! As you sacrifice the in an effort to save its brethren proved that the death of little animals had never been so cute. A diabolical. This puzzle game starts with simple challenges and works you steadily towards ultra-challenging conundrums that require split-second timing with the mouse. In its, in its initial release, the PC version was a poor imitation of its Amiga predecessor. But the Windows 95 outtake included with Lemmings uh, pinball should be snatched up by all who missed this classic. I always love they always this. This list uh, makes lots of references towards your beloved uh, Commodore Amiga. It makes the list twice, as a matter of fact. 15 funniest computer games of all time. Topping the list is uh, Space Quest 4, Secret of Monkey Island 1 and 2 for number 2. And then number 14, Signosis 1991 Lemmings. Yes! Watching cute animals plunge off cliffs drowned and explode can be fun. In terms of its popularity back in the day, we also have this from Computer Gaming World, which lists uh, Lemmings as number two in terms of the top action games from a poll. In the top ten games, it's uh, ranked as number seven uh, back in the day. Now we'll take a look at Amazing Computing, your original Amiga Monthly Resource, Volume 6. Number four, April of 1991. We're pushing back the uh, uh, North American release date even more now, aren't we? April of 1991, 395 in America. And make sure that you make it a point to get to the second annual World of Amiga in New York, April 5th through the 7th of 1991. Well, you can get seminars with the Jim Sachs. Make sure to check out my Defender of the Crown review, dedicated to Jim. Lemmings by David Brown. Every once in a while, there is a program that comes along that makes you ask, why didn't I think of that? It doesn't need to be the most sophisticated and new productivity product. In fact, most often this startling, obvious idea is an extremely simple one. Like Lemmings. In Lemmings, Psygnosis has once again brought a simple theme to a graphically exciting game. Without your help, charming but mindless creatures will walk off cliffs, straight into fire, or drown in assorted fluids in order to advance. In the world of Lemmings, you must direct a promotional, never of the little beastie safely through the many dangers of each level. While music is strictly a matter of taste, and some may find the light lines of music a bit annoying, the game would be at a loss without it. The music changes with each level to add a background and accent to each new difficulty, but it can be turned off by the user. Sound effects are handled extremely well, so that even a lemming facing certain destruction is heard in a small, anxious voice say, Oh no! Only your quick thinking can save them and advance you to the next 
multiple level. Each successive layer demands another set of skills as you discover a way to get through the level. There may be more than one way to pass through a level. With enough lemmings remaining, you would advance you to the next, but once you have conquered a level, it is yours for life. If you record the long password for that level. And this feature makes lemmings a real winner. Lemmings has all the makings of a classic. It's based on a clever and unique idea. It is easy to learn, and become more challenging with each level, and it is addictive. Psygnosis has not only scored a hit, they have created a lot of sleepless nights for the rest of us. Now why didn't I think of that? It actually makes a mistake here with the screenshot, calling it accolades, uh, lemmings. One final cute little bit from amazing uh, computing here, Atari. Well. Now it's time to look at what Atari is up to. Once again, the Tramels refuse to give up on their long dead computer, the Atari ST. So they changed a few things around and are once again touting the ST as the ideal computer for home, office, or school. The new version of the 1040 ST is called the 1040 STE. Although the bandito doesn't really know what the E stands for. It's rather amusing to read the spec sheet on the STE. It reminds the Bandito of an Amiga 500 created by a primitive tribe that had never actually seen an Amiga, but had heard reports from missionaries of what the Amiga could do. Check it out. The STE boasts a color palette of 4,096 colors, just like an Amiga. Whew. Ouch. Ouch, does that sting? <laughs> I don't even hate the ST at all. <laughs> But oh my, my, those words are harsh. Super, super harsh. Now rarely for an Amiga game, we have some uh, figures. On the first days of sale, apparently it would top 55,000 copies in the very first uh, few days. And it is estimated between 1991 and 2006 to have sold uh, between 15 and 20 million copies. Whoa, uh, yeah, did this game have an impact, especially for those uh, early computer uh, titles? Can you hear me in the background there? Yes, this game gets extraordinarily difficult. Toward. You gotta, you know, there's multiple ways you can do most, a lot of the levels in this game. Once you get towards the end of it all, <laughs> it's, there's really only one way to do a lot of these levels. After I figured them all out, I went, I went back to uh, a long play of it all just to see how different. And I was surprised at genuinely how some of these uh, harder levels, how I did do them quite differently than some. This level right here, I did this one very differently uh, from how uh, the long play people seem to do it. My, my version is much, much more difficult, <laughs> actually. But there are a lot of those later levels which we are almost identical on. It's because you really, you can only do it. The game is expecting you to do it in a certain way. And for the most part, I am very, very cool with it all. I enjoy figuring this stuff out. But the key word there is figuring it out. What I really don't like, even this game, I hate when the time limit is so strict, when you know exactly what it is expecting from you. You're doing it exactly the right way, but you're just not doing it quick enough. That ain't cool with me. Most of my frustrations with this game, it's about uh, running out of time, having it so close. Uh, they're almost all in, but there's... You know, I just needed two more seconds or five seconds, but nope, nope, you wanted 100%. I didn't quite get there in time. And actually, the lag in this game on occasion when all of the lemmings are on screen at the same time, especially if they're packed together, even though it might seem like uh, it's just overwriting another lemming, no, it, the computer is rendering all of those lemmings. And it really seems to uh, struggle when all, like, the hundred lemmings get into a tight little bunch there. And I've noticed that the time, like, the clock is, uh, in terms of the lag, when the game lags, the clock does not necessarily lag at the same rate. 
so the clock is actually running a little faster than it should when the game itself is lagging so it actually benefits you to scroll the screen away from the lemmings and they'll actually run they'll move a little faster <laughs> that's that's really that's bad that is bad right there when you have lost a level not even based on the clock but based on the lag when the clock is not running at the same speed as the game of course that's not going to stop me from recommending it and from loving it because you don't need to win this one you don't need to win this game in order to get incredible enjoyment out of it you know winning it is you know for the amaskis amongst us that would be me let's take a look at dragon magazine 350 usa Number one, 71. What is with every single one of these magazines featuring the exact same photograph of the screen? The animation is great, and the digitized sound effects of the lemmings screaming and wailing as they fall at your desire for a successful mission and saving those furry idiots. We highly recommend this game, especially to Tetris fanatics who are hunting for a strategy game that requires similar reflexes. Lemmings is sure to be a smash hit for Psygnosis. And of course, we've got to take a look at the manual itself. My original manual. I got another one around here as well. Oh, no more lemmings featured. The exact same game manual. Check a look at uh, some of these things. Like, uh, look what I can do. The build bridges guy is the one that uh, has me a little um, curious. <laughs> Most certainly, without a doubt, one of the best manuals in terms of European games. The European games usually did not feature the greatest manuals. They were usually very, you know, just the simplest little things a few pages long. American game manuals, in contrast, they could be, they could be 50, 100 plus pages long. I absolutely love the manuals and this one still it's a simple one it's only 20 pages long at least the american version the uh, european version is actually the exact same manual except it's a little longer actually you know because they usually in europe they feature multiple languages so it's the same manual in a couple different languages it's only 20 pages long this american version but it's so oh, it's glossy color very very nice Lemmings from the manual, an intriguing game in which you help hordes of mindless but delightful creatures known as lemmings to escape hostile environments in over 100 play levels. Lemmings are very cute, but also very dumb. They will mindlessly walk off cliffs into water, hazards or traps, or they will mill around bumping into walls or other obstacles unless you help them get their act together. A quick brain. The ability to plan ahead and lifetime's dedication to the save a lemming campaign are required to get the right lemming to perform the right action at the right time. A forgotten blocker, a rogue miner, or a misplaced bridge could spell disaster for every lemming on screen. And while, yes, I am trying to get the American side of things out when nobody else is, no. I don't forget about the friends over on the other side. Of the pond. Amiga Computing, Britain's longest running Amiga magazine, uh, 295 pounds. There's actually an American version of Amiga Computing, but I can't seem to find any actual, you know, like uh, PDFs of the American version. Lemmings is absolutely brilliant. Psygnosis has managed to produce a game that is not only totally original, but also features the kind of addictive gameplay that will keep you coming back for more and more time and again. If you only ever intend buying one game for your Amiga, then it's got to be Lemmings. Put simply, Lemmings is an absolute Amiga classic. Jason Halbert from a Raz magazine, a UK magazine, but also sold in America. Looks like uh, they got a little early release uh, version based on that screenshot on the cover there. With the nightmarish range of hazard obstacles and the yawning chasms to be traversed, any level is usually remarkably difficult, but extremely entertaining, fun, very competitive, and horrendously addictive. The Amiga version of Lemmings, graphics 93% detailed despite tiny size of Lemmings. Five stages of level provide variety. Sound 92%, superb stereo sound effects, a huge range of silly in-game tunes. Playability 96%, over 100 levels, hours of a genocide. Insanely frustrating and puzzling action. 94% overall, out now, 24.99 pounds. 
You know, I actually had a lot more that I collected, and I can't show you, you know, the, you know like the best reviews, really. You end up collecting a lot more than you are, you know, that you can actually show in the allotted uh, time available. And you're also uh, giving out your opinions as well. I mean, this is one of my favorite games. I love this game. I adore this game. Congratulations, everybody at DMA Design salutes you as a master! Well, I means player, not many people will complete the mayhem levels. You are definitely one of the elite. Well, well thank you, uh, DMA. I appreciate that. And, you know, if this had been done by any other game, it probably would go down as one of the worst endings of all time. But, here today, it's just, it's something about it. There's something about Lemmings where having the design team give you a nice little round of applause. You are the one. <laughs> uh, that really, really makes my day. Love the game. Absolutely recommend it. Probably, intellectually, the best Amiga game ever made. Hope you will check out uh, the written review shot97retro.blogspot.com Tons of pictures, uh, tons of gifts. Hope you'll enjoy that. Check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash shot97retro or at shot97retro. A lot of the uh, stuff that I can't fit into the videos, I end up uh, you know posting an image here and there on uh, Twitter, and lots of little tiny videos, too, that don't uh, end up getting uh, shown on the uh, channel also. So what to point you to in terms of other videos you can uh, check out? Well, this is, uh, this is uh, the first video of Season 5, everybody. I've been doing this for four years now, so I'm, definitely, I'm just going to point you to the first videos of every uh, gaming memory and review uh, season here. The last one. We started with Sid Meier's Pirates. Uh, before that, uh, for uh, year three, it was uninvited on the Amiga. And uh, before that, it was Arkanoid. Do it again! Super Nintendo. And the very first year I covered for my first review ever, Discovery on the Amiga. It's been a fun ride, I have to say. Uh, a little lonely at times but fun.